am a money magnet. Everything I touch turns to gold. Repeat that every day for 12 times per day and you'll get as rich as Jeff Bezos, but keep your hair. If only it were that simple. But seriously, there are some ways that work when it comes to manifesting your future. Consider some of the GOATs, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan, Michael Phelps, Lindsey Vaughn, so many people that are top athletes say that they use visualization, a technique for manifestation in order to excel at their sports. If you want to master wealth building, is there a place for manifestation, visualization, and other mystical ways of transforming an idea into reality? We say absolutely. And today we're going to share with you how we do it and how it's transformed our wealth building journeys. Hey, and welcome to the Wealth Wisdom Financial Podcast. We believe when conventional financial thinking doesn't get you where you want to go, you need wealth wisdom. So hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching on YouTube, give us a like and comment below. And we'd love to hear your manifestations that you pray about or whatever. So uh, honestly, though, I'm not good at sitting still. I am not that type of person, even though we have the still method. I'm not good at that. I'm an external processor. So things like meditation, visualization, even prayer are hard for me. I can pray in groups, but find it very hard to get quiet and focus on my mind, my breath and so forth. And Amanda has tried to do it, you know. So I want to make sure we include some of the more active ways of manifesting wealth, right? And how the still method works for people like me. No, I, I do have to say that Brendan is actually fantastic at making things happen with what it what seems like manifestation, visualization, or prayer. One time back in the day, he really wanted an iPod to listen to music on the go. This was way back. I told him we didn't have the money for it. Sure enough, soon thereafter, he was given not one, but two iPods for free. I ended up using one of them and he got to keep the bigger one. Um, but he's been given so many things throughout our marriage, a big TV, furniture, food, beer, all kinds of things. He just seems to attract free stuff like no one I've ever met. Now, is that because I'm manifesting, visualizing, or praying? Not usually. It's because I talk to people. I'm friendly, and I, I frankly, I care about them. Sometimes during the conversations, they hear about something I'd like to have and offer me an extra that they have, or they share they are looking to find a home for something that I want. It's just a math equation, really. The more people that I talk to, the more likely I'll be able to help them get what they need or I'm going to be able to get what I want or need. Now, it's not that you set out to get an iPod through all your social interactions. No. Once you've had it in your mind that you want one, it's that that iPod was in your mind and then it kind of naturally came up. Would you say that's true? Yeah, I would always have talks about it somehow. <laughs> yeah. So if I were to apply that to wealth building, here's what I try to say. It's succinctly. Money flows freely to those with a plan for it and to work their plan. Money flows freely to those with a plan for it and who work their plan. Manifesting, visualization, even prayer aren't some magical practices that automatically bring overnight solutions. They typically work when you do. Can you say that again? They yeah, what? they typically work when you do. So practically speaking, if you want to make six figures of passive income each year, you start by developing a plan. You visualize what it'll take to make it happen. You dream of what it'll look and feel like when you get there. Then guess what you do? You get to work, but you'll work differently because of the concrete visuals and dreams, but you do work for it. Yeah. Michael Jordan throws the free throw differently because of the visualizations he's done. And I've seen this time and time again in that those who take the time to dream, to visualize, to pray, and then get to work more often find what they're looking for than people who don't. It might be like Yogi Berra says, which I think is maybe some sports guy. I think so. <laughs> if you don't know where you are going, you'll end up someplace else. Those who know where they are going are more likely to direct their money in the same direction than those who don't know where they're going. I think I'm liking this, especially because of what often happens when people skip the manifestation, visualization, and prayer part. 
they get lost. And if they share finances with someone else, they're both lost. And they often start fighting because they're both lost, right? I mean, that's just how it goes. I've heard it said that the root of all conflict in relationship is unexpressed expectations. If a couple doesn't talk about their expectations of saving more money by spending less on, let's say, donuts, then someone is going to keep buying donuts and the other is going to get mad. I think most would agree that it's highly unlikely someone, me, will stop buying donuts if their partner simply thinks about them not buying donuts. We're setting ourselves up for disappointment and resentment if we never bring it up. Yeah, Brandon's never going to stop buying donuts if I don't tell him I want you to stop buying donuts. Unless my waistline tells me. (laughs) On the other hand, if I visualize having the conversation with my partner about skipping the donuts, if I pray we have a positive conversation, and I think of something really awesome that we could accomplish with the money we would have spent on donuts, then I'm way more likely to have that conversation, to have it be a good conversation, and to inspire Brandon with that other financial goal and what it can mean to hit that. The manifestation, the visualizing, the prayers, they all work when I do. Now, take this to a higher level, not just on the little donuts. We could apply it to some major purchases. How big of a home you live in, for example. You could apply it to how you'll build your income and make more money. You could apply it to how you're saving and investing for retirement. Just like manifesting visualization and prayer, you can start with small things, but you can try bigger and bigger things. Let's say the donut level works and you're able to do that awesome thing with the money that was going to the donuts. Now you've got the confidence to go after something much bigger and more impactful. So are you ready to manifest a brighter financial future? Do you want to start visualizing becoming a multi-billionaire? Do you want to dream and pray for wealth that allows you to be more generous than you ever thought possible? We believe you need to get STILL. STILL is an acronym we built, S-T-I-L-L, and the S is set your sights. That's when you develop those dreams, those visualizations, and then you can put it into work with the S-T-I-L-L. People that take this step often find more money to put into their bank and yourself type policies. They create stronger relationships with their partners. If you're unsure where to get started or what it will take to get you to that next level of your financial journey, we'd love for you to get our still method playbook where we teach you how to use a still method. You can get it at wealthwisdomfp.com slash still. There you'll find questions you can meditate on by yourself or in conversation with your partner or with financial allies like us, you'll also get the bonus of how to put those visualizations into action. Who would Michael Jordan be if he visualized all those free throws but never got in the game? Again, it's wealthwisdomfp.com slash still to get our playbook. And better yet, share the episode with your partner and then see how your conversations around money improve as you share expectations from a place of positive visualization and prayer, and it can work for people like me who don't do that kind of thing, right? But I've been helped by Still Method Framework and those things because, I mean, Amanda, you're amazing in that (laughs) regard. Well, thank you so much for being here. Please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our next episodes coming up in the future. May you live long and profit. The topics presented in this podcast are for general information only and not for the purposes of providing legal, accounting, or investment advice. On such matters, please consult a professional who knows your specific situation. I do have to add here at the end. One of the reasons the visualizations worked besides Brandon talking to people is because we wouldn't rush to buy something right when we wanted it. There, I learned this in college. I needed something, I, was, I didn't have the money for it. And if I waited a little bit and it came my way. If you take nothing else from this episode, try that. You want something, see if you can wait You know, 10 minutes. If it's like you were thinking about doing Grubhub or something, wait 10 minutes, see if you think of a different idea for what you could have for dinner that saves you some money. Or if it's some big Who purchase, the doorbell might ring. wait a week. You, know, you never know. Um, so little bonus tip there that we didn't put into the episode. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. We really appreciate you.